surprised by a street car. <laughs>
to B is absolutely the way to go. I'm feeling a little more confident about our tune-up. We got in the Falcon. It's going to go A to B. Fully One confident. Down. One more down. One more down. Really? <laughs>
job, guys. I know the brothers hate running each other, but good guys. Good look. Tommy got it.
Motorsports, the Preston's in their eye, Logan Duval. Do you trust Paul? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Say bye. There goes the little lamb. Is your cat making it? <laughs> That's definitely who crop Her eyes look really glossy. You got glaucoma. Are you giving? We're gonna do the start. You're back. She escaped. <laughs> Get up here. Come on. So where do we start? Whale. We're just gonna go over the Kentucky race. Um, we didn't get to film any like in between round stuff because everything was so hectic. When we got there, we were thinking about skipping Cincy altogether to get a good parking spot, even though a good parking spot there didn't exist because all the semis we're pretty much parking the lanes, and that's about anywhere you could park where there wasn't it uh, wasn't a swamp. Yeah, there was there's people parking across the street at like local businesses and car dealerships. There's a school and an O'Reilly's. <laughs> people were parking at. Yeah, it was insane. I've never seen that many uh, toters and trailers and trucks at a race. Like, and that that's a relatively small track, so it's not like it was Rockingham or something. It was like Rockingham car count at pacemakers. Mm -hmm. You know. And it was muddy, man. It must have rained all week there. Well, it rained all week, and then the night before, everybody was saying there's raindrops the size of, like, golf balls. So. Yeah. So it was, needless to say, it was it was a mess. And there was mud all up in the cars, and it was falling out during your burnout and everything else. It was pretty... Literally, when you pulled in, they were like, okay, so if you go this way, you park over there if you don't care about having to get pulled out. <laughs> And then if you would go this way, then you got to park really far away. It's just like the old Cummins didn't care though; it didn't even turn the tire over. No. Yeah, you're you're pretty much told when you pull in like you're gonna get stuck, but if you're okay with it, go ahead and park down there. Nah. So by the end of the night, every, there was people uh, in their four wheel drive trucks pulling out everybody. So a little mud fest. So first round, I drew. Who did I draw? It was that. That fox body, what they call it? Gotti. John Gotti. John Gotti. And I was told that there was going to be an upset, but the only upset I saw was them getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all you got to say. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I have to say. And so then, uh, first round for me, I drew um, this F body Camaro from Tennessee. Um, it's the one that has all the graffiti over it. Uh, the first time I saw him was at Crossville, and uh, I think he just switched into a new combination. He's got a 540 with twins, and uh, I think he just couldn't turn it down quite enough. Um, so we got through first round. How about that tune-up? It was a solid A to B tune-up right off the trailer. I'm telling you, first round was like, it was a spin fest for a lot of people. Um, judging the surface when we got there, it was like, it looks pretty good. Like, it was deceiving. Uh, I got lucky because... Uh, I was like 12th pair and I had loaded like a, a low five second tune up in it because I thought it was going to be that good. But when I rolled up there, Rob come up and Avery Hansen come up and I'm really glad that he did and was nice enough to tell me that I was about to blow the tires off because I told him, he's like, what kind of tune up you got in this thing? I'm like, uh, I told him and he's like, yeah, turn that shit way down. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I did and it was still on the edge, so if I hadn't turned it down, it would have been a smoke show for me. I think I still could have won, but it, it would have been a smoke show. So I got some good data off first round because Avery Hansen and Rob came up and they helped me out, so big thank you to them. So then uh, he even went and turned down my tune up a little bit after his pass, and I went A to B. One of the better passes first round. And then uh, second round, you raced some guy. He didn't even make it off the starting line, I don't think. Yeah, I raced uh, that Casper White Malibu. I think he must have had an issue on the trans brake. Mm -hmm. It sounded like his car died or something. But um, your second round like, was solid. It looked really fast. Yeah, so second round, I worked off my first round tune-up that was a little hot. 
what I did was I pulled about eight degrees, a tenth of a second out to where it would hit the tire and then as the front end would fully extend like it normally does, it kind of loses the tire sometimes when it comes up too quick. So I kind of guessed where that was at based on time. And as it came up, I pulled a little bit of timing right there in that area just to help it stick the tire once it rolled back and it made a clean pass with like minimum wheel speed, went a good mile an hour, and I was pretty happy with that. I wasn't expecting to have to draw you third round though. I raced a diesel import second round. <laughs> I raced some import and oh my gosh, it, when it gets on the trans brake, it was like, it looked like a diesel car. It had so, I think so much he, I think he had eight injectors and four cylinders. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, luckily he actually left with me pretty good, but um, he couldn't quite top in with me. And so then uh, third round, we ended up having to draw each other. Um, stupid. I'm tired. Yeah, there's like what, 50 something cars still at that point? There's either 26 or 50. 51. Yeah, yeah there's about 26 third cars round. left. And actually, so the weird thing about third round is, is literally every crew, everybody that was from the same state had to race each other that round. But we're not going to go into all that. The, the pairings were uh, randomly generated on a computer behind closed doors. So uh, I'm not saying anything was shady, but it was just kind of weird. It was very weird. Um, nobody got. I like to be able to see. I like to be able to see the chip draw at least after first round. Like I know get get the hundred or whatever cars out of the way, or maybe even just start chip drawing after that. You know, like right. I like to be able to see the chip draw. Like right I want to be in charge of what who I race. Like I want to pick my chip. I mean, I know I got, you got to race everybody by the end of the night. So but. here's here's the thing: when there's guys out there like the Prestons, and they have two identical cars, they can bounce tune-ups back off the other car, and they can share data and get faster every round. When and we're doing the same thing, even though we have two different setups, we know how fast my truck's capable of going. We know how fast your car's capable of going. So if my truck goes a certain number. I know the Falcon can go that number at least. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get paired up early in the rounds, that hurts both of us, you know, because whoever wins, the other person isn't going to get the data for the other car the next round. So it's kind of, it just sucks having to run each other that early. Um, and you know, a lot of people that do really well, Say for Patches and Willie Dynamite, for example, they do the same thing. They got really similar setups in both cars. They share data. Uh, Kendall Gowen and Mark Booz, same deal. Uh, there's a reason those cars go rounds like they do because they have twice the amount of data that everybody else does. So and there's no we get paired up. It. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, when we get paired up early like that, it just kills it. You know. Um, but I mean, there is cars that do really well out there that don't have a car to bounce that off of. Like mm -hmm. Brandon Mork, for example, he has a combination that nobody else has and does really well with. Um, he made it to the semifinals, I think. But yeah, it definitely helps to have two different cars to share data. Here's the thing about the whole randomly generated thing. They could literally hit the random button as many times as they want until they're like, oh, well, you know, that one looks good. <laughs> That's what sketches me out about it. I'm not saying, I'm not accusing anybody, but... I just want to be able to see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nobody... It was I know there. at Digger Die, they did a random first round and then it put everybody into a ladder system. Yeah. That way you could see what you were going to have every round. Mm -hmm. I like that. Dude. I don't even mind the ladder. Yeah. But anyways, so we raced each other third round. We both put in heater tune-ups to see... Because we wanted the car that was going to work the best to win. I mean, so we just put heater tune-ups in both of them and see which one will come out on top and the Falcon held up a little better because the truck spun a little bit and, and I kind of I kind of freaking figured it was going to spin, spin but it was one of those things where I felt like maybe the Falcon had a little bit better chance at that race so I wasn't going to second guess it and turn it down just a little bit even though that round I probably could have won if I had turned it down just a little bit, but it's just one of those things, you know? We had to see which car was gonna be faster. So uh, then fourth round, uh, I had to race Brandon Mork. 
And uh, I think it was going to be a close race except for I forgot how to do a burnout. Um, I boobed up my burnout, tires were cold and they had rocks all over them and then I pretty much, I've never seen this car white smoke like it did so it was absolutely my fault. Um, I had turned it down on the hit like 100 RPM and I pulled another 8 degrees because the track was starting to go away. It was starting to get cold um, and the rubber wasn't very sticky. But, I mean, the rubber was never sticky all day, so I don't think it was that. I think it was just, when I felt your tires after the burnout, they were literally as cold or colder than my hand. And they had like cigarette butts and rocks all over them. So I, yeah. think, I think that was definitely why it white smoked right off the hit. It doesn't usually do that. I, I don't want to make excuses or anything. It was 100% my fault, and there's no, no question about it. Um, I think... Billy had bumped up the shift RPM a little bit, and it usually, I, I just let it roll out and it shifts itself in the burnout. And I, I actually, if you go back and watch the video, it went to 7,400, and then that's when I started letting off, because like where I usually let off, and then it rolls out, and, but it just never shifted, because shift RPM was at 7,500. So now we know, just have your hand on the shifter and just shift it yourself. Well, I just need to wind the bitch up and not be a, anyways. It's all right, mistakes Just happen. Shift it yourself in the burnout. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, I should. So, um, the Prestons and Logan Duvall went to the final. They did a little split. And then that was that. Um, it was a good race. I had fun. Um, there was like 40 big tire cars. That was something I'd never seen before. Yeah. Uh, the car, count, the car count was awesome in both classes, and then they had a hard tire class as well. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. All in all, the event went pretty smooth. Had a few accidents, no oil downs, which was great. Um, great payout, great uh, buy-in. It was only like $175 buy-in for 20 grand. That's damn near unheard of. Uh, so big props to Quinn and Bubba for the good event. The only thing we didn't really like was the, the pairing, but I mean, that's, you know, everybody has opinions. I get why they did it. It just could have been done better, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, so next weekend, we're going to be at uh, Midnight Madness at KD, if you don't mind me telling them where we're going. That's fine. I think it's going to be a pretty good event. There isn't really anywhere else to go next weekend, so I think everybody's going to pretty much funnel there. It should be a good time. I, we usually have a good chance of winning there. We have a lot of data from that track, so I'm confident that one of us can get close to the winner's circle, if not in it. So one of us can be in it. One of us can be in it. That's yeah, that's the right answer. But yeah. So after this goes up, uh, we're gonna post the big tire footage. Alice and I covered it, and uh, there's a lot of good racing in that in the big tire footage. There was pretty much. I'd say the fastest big tire cars in the country uh, were there, besides like the no prep kings guys. But it's some wild footage, good coverage. So be on the lookout for that. We'll probably post that Friday. Why are you laughing? The Chevy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's bored. She's like, you guys have been doing this too long now. Wait, come play Christian Chevy. Frisbee? Didn't even didn't even move for the frisbee. Frisbee? Ball? Frisbee? Oh, oh, oh. ball? Frisbee? Oh. What's good? <laughs> Come on, scrap. You got the camera. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost bad. She's like, sorry, sorry. Come on, gently. Okay. okay. We're gonna go ahead and close out this video. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you. We'll see you Thanks guys. Thanks to everybody that came up to us at the track and bought merch and mm -hmm. hang, hung out, talked to us. Yep. There's a lot of a lot of little kids that come up and they're all really sweet. You know, it's always good hanging out with the fans. So thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.